is from Andrew. With subdivision occurring around Currajong and Kermon, what community infrastructure has Council recently spent using the Section 94 contributions on in this district? So I'll hand over to Andrew to answer that question. Thank you, Joseph. Um, so uh, there's, there's no uh, current contribution plan uh, for Kermon Currajong other than Section 94A contributions plan, uh, which is LGA wide. Uh, and Jeff will touch on, on what's uh, with respect to the uh, within the area associated with that plan shortly. Uh, the Works Council is undertaking uh, in terms of the Currajong investigation area will, will include a contribution plan. Uh, in the interim, uh, planning proposals within the uh, investigation area have been finalised to date, uh, that have been finalised to date, have included a voluntary planning agreement, uh, basically at the rate of $30,000 per additional lot. Uh, which is basically uh, uh, put towards uh, local infrastructure and facilities uh, such as um, cycleways, bus shelters, landscape and park improvements and road improvements, um, which are basically to, to serve the needs of the community um, as a consequence of, the, of each development. Uh, the voluntary planning agreements are structured such that the payment of the contribution is at the time of creating the new lot or, or new lots, uh, so basically when all necessary works have been completed. And, and the survey plan is ready to, uh, to be lodged. Uh, today, whilst some of the uh, finalised planning proposals within the investigation area have included a, that have included a voluntary planning agreement, have subsequently lodged uh, development applications, in, in some cases, some of which have received development approvals, uh, none of these have actually been completed. Uh, so in short, uh, to date, Council hasn't actually received any contributions from developments associated with subdivision with, uh, within the Kermont Currajong investigation area. But we will do when, uh, when those developments are completed uh, and we work, we'll work through the, with the community in terms of how those, uh, those contributions monies are spent on those, uh, for those various uh, infrastructure items. Does anyone have any questions uh, in relation to, the, to that issue or any other issues around the Kermont Courage on Investigation Area while Andrew's up here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in which case we'll go on to the second question. So it's uh, from Jacqueline. Would Council consider building shared walkways and bicycle paths along Grosvale Road between Patterson Lane and Currajong Village and along Bridge Road between Kuiper School and Grosvale Road? Many people walk along these roads and it's quite dangerous. Drivers do not abide by the speed limit. Driver vision can be distorted by the sun and the setbacks are often overgrown and they are uneven to walk on. Um, as you go before pedestrian and cycle connections are really important and Council has been prioritising its expenditure and seeking grants for, for various works, notably in the trying to connect uh, the Light Park through to South Windsor, Windsor and then ultimately Holman. But currently the priorities are to complete those stage projects between Bly Park and ultimately Westerly to Currajong. There is $250,000 allocated in future programs, 2019-20 from the, the developer contributions that Andrew referred to. Um, and hopefully we can get some matching funds to, to extend that, uh, those works. Um, but they'll be the, the, current, the priority will be the, the current job to Kermont link that people have been asking for. And whilst the links referred to in this question are undoubtedly important um, and good to have for the foreseeable future, it's not likely that we'd be able to, to achieve those um, on a priority basis. Um, if there are key obstruction points, and I'll have the, my crews look at that, um, it can be easy, easily addressed uh, to improve safety at any pinch points. Um, then we'll try and, and look at those in the, the next few months. The third question is from the Bells Line of Road Community Action Group. And there's, so the first one is, is Nabua Bridge still on the agenda? If so, are there traffic studies relating to this, and can we see them, please? And Peter, Thanks, Joseph. Uh, is that okay off the back? Okay, okay good. Uh, the Navua, the, the crossing of the Gross River is definitely on the agenda. The current crossing is not an ideal solution, primarily because it's highly flood prone. It will be uh, become, uh, it won't be possible to use that crossing once you get about a one in 10 year flood event. So what we're looking at with 
roads and maritime services is an alternative alignment that will be above the 1 in 100 year flood level. So that it will be usable in the majority of situations. And that will provide an alternative way north of the river. Admittedly, you have to go to Springwood, but it will be an alternative road access north of the river when the Richmond Bridge and the Windsor Bridge go under. And they will go under uh, significantly in advance of this river crossing that we're proposing. So we're working on that with RMS at the moment. Uh, we are hopeful there'll be an announcement on that in the next month. And likewise, the studies that are uh, probably going to assist in informing that bridge solution will probably be released in the next month or so as well. There'll be a briefing of council in the near future and the second stage of the study will study will start in the near future as well. So there will be some information becoming available to the community in relation to the, the traffic and the bridge. And the, the message to take away is that we are still pressing ahead with that crossing. So the, the fourth question is also from the Bell's line of Road Community Action Group. And is Council actively seeking a seat on the working party instigated by Minister Pavey and includes Centrop around discussions about the corridors? So the Mayor and I attended a meeting with uh, Minister Pavey and the Centrop Councils about six weeks ago. And during the course of that meeting, the idea of creating this committee was floated and we certainly indicated that Hawkesbury Council would most likely want to participate. The, the difficult thing for the Mayor at the time was that this was new news to us on that day. We don't actually have a resolution of Council, so it was impossible to give a, a guarantee on the day. But when we've got more details, we'll certainly be taking something back to Council, and I'm sure that the recommendation will be to participate in that that group. The other thing I think worth noting at this point in time is the fact that the report that went to Council in relation to the corridors made reference to Central West Councils and made reference to the fact that the freight, trade and transport needs of those Central West Councils needs to be determined before you start planning a new road crossing over the Blue Mountains. The, the Commonwealth Government at the moment are building what's called inland rail. It's a rail line that will connect Melbourne to Brisbane and that will mean that Central West New South Wales will be a day from ports in Melbourne and Brisbane. And the other thing that we've raised in our submission is the fact that there's also a, a, a new line that's <coughs> being built from the port of Newcastle to Golgong. It, it almost goes to the inland rail. So you could quite easily then build a connection and then you've got three ports all within easy access of either central west New South Wales or even further out. So we think some of those broader considerations need to be considered and, and determined before you start working on any detailed plans for the crossing of the Blue Mountains. And again, we also believe that at the moment, the, the crossing basically ends at the doorstep to the World Heritage Area. And you've, you've got to question whether you want to put a, a six lane motorway through a World Heritage Area without that study as well. So that's sort of information that's available in the public <coughs> domain in various council reports and that's an update on that committee that was first mentioned by the by Minister Pavey about six weeks ago. So the fifth question is from Gary. Would it be possible to have a pedestrian crossing installed in Currajong Village? The preferred location would be between the chemist and the Currajong Village Kitchen Cafe. This is a very long-standing issue, this one. Um, the council's looked at this on a number of occasions. However, there is an RMS standard that applies for um, 
pedestrian, to permit installation of pedestrian crossings. Um, that called it warrant, and it's really just a standard. Um, and Courageong just does not become comfortable <coughs> for of meeting that standard. Essentially, yeah, you could have pedestrians times vehicles um, per hour greater than 60,000. Um, you're going to do that on three one-hour occasions a day, so it's, never, it's not going to even meet the, the warrant for, for that standard. Having said that, I have some sympathy for the standard um, because it's important to ensure that, you know, as motorists, we don't become complacent about safety at crossings. If you don't see somebody in a crossing every day or every second day, then you, know, you tend not to, to see it. That's the, that's the reason they have those. That's a, a pretty well-founded body of research that goes with that. Um, having said that, though, there is a 40 kilometre zone in the village. And interestingly, I noticed the other day RMS and not the people drive it, the council's not responsible for enforcement. Um, but interestingly, RMS are now trying to look at you know, having 40k zones in other high built up, high density built up areas in villages. So it's starting to recognise that you know, Courage is not alone in you know, bad driver behaviour and how do you actually start to change the motorist behaviour. So that's the big term issue, but I can't give you a more positive answer than it simply won't get up. So the six questions from Megan. Um, Rhodes Minister Pavey has recently flagged the establishment of a Central West Working Party. Is this the same question? Thank you. So we go on to the next question. Unless there's something else you want to say, Peter? I think we covered that. And the last question that we got from online is: How will Council make the entire Hawkesbury community aware? that the proposed Bloor motorway would make traffic congestion worse and that it does nothing to alleviate the terrible traffic congestion problems in North Richmond. Richmond. I'm, I'm sure most people in the room are aware that Council considered a report in relation to this matter last week and as a consequence of that report, Council's made a submission that's gone into Transport for New South Wales and I'll just read you a few extracts from the submission and then I'll explain what the next steps are going to be. So council is strenuously opposing the corridors and they've started with some general concerns uh, in terms of the state government's corridor proposal being flawed, the state government's failure to prioritise immediate local traffic solutions, the negative impact of the proposed corridors on the local community, impacts such as the impact on local economy and agricultural <coughs> productivity, impacts on community wellbeing and the health of residents, the again specific concerns then in relation to the Bells Line of Road were the fact that it was uh, located in highly sensitive areas comprising hundreds of established properties that are noted for their landscape quality, their established and interconnected communities, their agricultural productivity, their heritage, and their habitat and environmental qualities. <coughs> they also talked about the Bells Line of Road as a multi-lane motorway terminating adjacent to the UNESCO listed World Heritage Blue Mountains based on minimal projected traffic. It also talked about the design and location of the corridor without providing any information about freight, trade or transport matters that are critical to determining the future role and function of a crossing, in particular in relation to Central and Western New South Wales. The inadequacy of the community consultation throughout the process and the lack of transparency, the lack of detailed information provided to affected landowners regarding their rights and obligations as a result of the proposed corridor, and talked about things such as what impact would it have on recent approvals, future development rights, land block blocks, insurance matters and compulsory land acquisition and the, la the lack of detailed investigations in relation to matters such as flooding and evacuation, traffic impacts, noise, air pollution and the proximity to nearby sensitive uses such as schools and wildlife corridors. And it then reaffirmed the mayoral minute from a couple of weeks ago where it, it acknowledged the need for the government to abandon the Bells Line of Road corridor west of the Hawkesbury River and genuinely, genuinely work with the community from the bottom up, not top down, to document the objectives of future transport needs 
identify transport, social, flood, environmental and other issues, develop options that respond to the community, develop objectives and issues, and then engage in broad and inclusive consultation with the community. So they were the main points in relation to the Bells Line of Road, but Council then went a little bit further and asked that community prepared submissions be referred to in the Council submission. So the Courage on Comoroy uh, Historical Society, the Hawkesbury Environmental Network and the Christopher Hallam submission were all specifically referenced and attached to the Council's submission, as was the Mayoral Minute. And then there was a final point about Council's general concerns with the acquisition process. So it was a pretty comprehensive submission. That's gone into the, uh, the State Government and as part of the Council resolution, it's asked staff to notify all affected landowners. So we'll be notifying landowners, we'll be letting resident and community groups know, and we'll be using our website and other media opportunities, social media, things like that, to alert everyone to the fact that the submission's gone in and this is what's detailed in the submission. So that's the end of the online questions. So are there any questions from the floor that people would like to ask? Uh, the question is, can you give us an update on Thompson Square? Uh, can we just ask specifically what about Thompson Square? The short answer from, and look, yeah, not apologies from RMS here, um, is that RMS have left the contract for the, the bridge um, the, to the Georgia Group, um, and they're actually on site at the moment doing some pre preparatory, pre -preparatory? Some preparatory works um, involving um, you know, complying with their, their consent conditions. Um, so the advice from RMS is that they're going to be starting sometime in September in physical works following final sign off of or achieving them some of the milestones that they with the uh, planning consent they have from the Minister. Is there any ongoing action council to support that? Council also, uh, the Mayor attended the Upper House inquiry and made a submission on behalf of council and in that process talked about the unique nature of this approval uh, the fact that it establishes approaches and documents that have never been heard of before uh, and talked about the history, the, the fact that uh, Windsor is the third oldest European settlement in Australia, the fact that the surrounding buildings are a critical element that frame the square and that other well-known squares around the world you would not put a road or a bridge through it. Uh, also talked about other cities that uh, have, like Chicago's got 13 movable bridges in about a mile and a half, and we can't afford one. Yeah. Uh, so it's you know these were all the, pre the these were all in the submission that was made by the mayor to the upper house inquiry, and we're still waiting on an outcome from that inquiry. That's about all we can do at the moment. Further questions? Yes. Thank you. So far, there have been several references to relationships with um, agencies, state government. Um, state government is extremely important in all sorts of ways for this community. Um, it's rumoured that this man called Paris may even be our who's already established. 
So the question is, what <coughs> is the strength or otherwise of Council's relationship with the New South Wales Government and its agencies? You'd think Joseph would have answered that question, wouldn't you? <laughs> the, the relationship varies according to the situation and the, the, the issue and the agency involved. So uh, we, we've, been, we've been working on a project with the Commonwealth and State Government called the City Deal. And through that project, we've been able to uh, secure some funding, about $15 million, that we're going to be putting into our town centres. Uh, and we've also got some other funding, some recently announced heritage funding, and there's some other opportunities as well. So that, that's been a good relationship for us in terms of getting some benefits for opportunities to work with the community. Other relationships have been more frustrating. Um, the Department of Planning have recently uh, confirmed the zoning of land at Finian. The, the challenge that presents for us is that that's the easy part, the rezoning. Uh, that's literally a stroke of a pen. But there are a whole lot of things that need to happen behind the scenes to make that process work. So one of the things you normally have is a Section 94 plan. That's a plan that identifies all the infrastructure work that needs to occur, the roads and the drains and the parks and the community facilities. It costs all of those items and then it sets a contribution rate per lot for each development. So as they develop, council gets those contributions and it can use that money to fund roads, key roads, key drainage items, those parks and things like that. We don't have a section 94 plan for Vineyard at the moment. We've got a rezoning, we've got applications coming in and we don't have a section 94 plan. And that's not a good outcome. So we're negotiating with developers through a VPA at the moment and we're madly working to get that Section 94 plan adopted. So that's, that's an example of a, a less satisfactory relationship. And one that, that could have been dealt with and just wasn't. And I, I can't explain why that would be the case because at the officer level that we've been working at, I think there's equal frustration. So, when it comes to things like the Windsor Bridge, that's a decision that's made at a very high level in government. And we're working with our peers in RMS and other government organisations, and they're doing as they're told. They're, you know, they're doing the work that they need to do because the government has made that decision. And we can have respectful and open conversations, but I know they've got a job to do and they've just got to do it. So it, it varies. So all of those are sort of the, the situations that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've just tried to give you a few examples there. But we, we work with all areas, the state government, across uh, social and community service areas, uh, community safety. Our relationship with local police is fantastic. Uh, the, 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 the police are very supportive of us, uh, they attend functions, you know, it, it is a, a great relationship. Our relationship with the RAAF is a great relationship as well. Um, in the uh, event on Australia Day last year at the Hawkesbury River, the RAAF did a flyover and they don't have to do those things. They, they just work with us and they do those good things. So. It varies, but we're very keen to have very good relationships wherever we can. So, any further questions? Um, can you tell us more about this uh, Gross River Bridge proposal? Um, it, it, specifically, I, I suppose, uh, could you tell us uh, what roads on this side of the Gross River it would uh, meet up with? 
So the question is a little bit more information about the Gross River Crossing and what roads on this side of the river does the bridge intend to link up? I, I can't tell you much more than that at the moment. Uh, what is being proposed though, uh, the Mayor has spoken to me last, <coughs> spoke to me last week. What, we, what we're going to do is uh, we'll be having a community meeting as soon as we've got some details on that. We'll be inviting everyone along. Uh, we know there's a lot of interest in the community. We know that uh, the, the Red Bank development is progressing. We know that residents are buying into that development or have already moved in or live in the area and they want to know what's going on. So as soon as we've got some detail, we'll certainly be arranging that meeting. We'll be letting everyone know and you'll get an indication of the alignment and the timing and those sorts of things and RMS will be at that meeting. So we are, we are hopeful that that will be in the next month or so. Can I just ask a question? If that bridge goes down, any union will be a little further up the downstream, which I never can now which way up the mountain. What are they going to do about the local roads? They will not cope with the traffic. So the, the question is, what's going to happen to the local roads if the bridge goes ahead? So the, the, the current bridge has been approved through the Vua Reserve. As I said, it's highly flood prone, so it's not the best solution. And with that approval was also a requirement to upgrade certain roads on the local network. That will still be the case. So the, the bridge is part of a link that goes from Springwood Road back up to Red Bank. And all those elements of the link are still required regardless of where the bridge goes. So that's going to impact on Carrigong Village because people will come down from Carrigong Heights, they will come through our village and up and along and those roads can't close. So as, as I said, that decision was made by council some time ago. So the developer has got authority to do that. Now what we're trying to do is get the best outcome we can. But once people get on the local road network, there's not a lot we can do. There may be some scope for some road closures or something like that, but again, that's something we'll have to work through with the community. It wouldn't be a case of you waking up one morning and the road's closed down the road. Uh, we, would, we would have to consult the community, talk about the pros and cons, and that may be one of the solutions, but it may not be as well. But we'll certainly have to work through that issue. Yes. Okay, so there were two questions. No, there was, a, there was a comment and a question. The comment was uh, a, a, a hope that council goes through a proper approval process for any bridge over the Gross River. Is that a fair enough? Yeah. So we'll go through a, a consultation and approval process, definitely, uh, in determining that second crossing. The the the. Following question involved public transport. So at, at the moment, uh, we've got a single line basically from Schofields to Richmond. And that places a, a limit on the number of trains that can move through that section over any period of time because you basically have to wait for one to come up and go back or they've got to cross a change at Richmond or something like that. We're, we're also looking at trying to increase the range of employment outcomes in Hawkesbury. And as part of that, we really do think that there may be some merit in looking at the duplication of that Richmond line. So that if we can get the, the sorts of employment outcomes that we're talking about, all those empty trains that come into Richmond of a morning before they go back full would actually have people in them. So there's potentially a business case there that would look at 
the cost of duplication and the benefits of, of doing that. Now, the council resolution the other night in relation to the corridors also talked about the R Richmond line and its duplication from Schofields to Richmond, and it also talked about investigating that thing extending south, investigating the extension of that line south to Penrith. So I, th I think you can take from that that your council is uh, very aware of the, the limits on public transport in the area at the moment. Uh, we're, we're also looking at a PCYC, and again, the council have resolved to include a, a, a bus service with that PCYC that starts providing a greater catchment and greater opportunity for young people to attend that PCYC, particularly from north of the river. So we're looking at a range of transport initiatives, some public, some community based, and uh, I think all of that is recognition that the point you make is well made. What's council's attitude towards the raising of Warragamba Dam? What's the question? So that matter was considered by council. Uh, there was a notice of motion uh, a few, uh, probably eight weeks ago, and there was a lot of debate in the chamber. But essentially, council's waiting for all of the studies to be prepared, and then it will form a view on what they believe should happen with Warragamba Dam. So the the that's, that's the position at the moment. Let's finish all the, the background work, the research and the studies, and then let's revisit that and form a position in relation to the raising of the dam. Yes. Hi. Um, with the crossing of the Grace River, um, I know it's only speculative, speculative <coughs> but would it require uh, land acquisition? So will the proposed crossing of the Grove River require land acquisition is the question. Uh, one of the options may, yes. Is that compulsory? I, uh, I, until we finalise all the details, I, I can't answer that. So the question is to do with land acquisition for the Gross River Crossing. Until we know the exact location and all the details, it's impossible to answer that. So we're still working through those details. And we'll, we'll have some signed heads of agreement with RMS and probably the developer, and all of those details will be fleshed out as part of that. But we don't have that agreed position at the moment. Have that question and then yours. And how does the um, comment fit into the crossing of, uh, of the Gross River? So how does the Bells Line, proposed Bells Line of Corridor link in with the crossing of the Gross River is the question. Uh, there's no link between the Gross River crossing and the Bells Line of Road corridor. They're two quite separately developed projects and they They've been prepared independently of each other. We certainly alerted state government to the <coughs> Nadua crossing, and we certainly uh, provided all the background information so that the, the relevant government agencies were aware of the history. But the, 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 the corridor is quite a long way away from the Gross River Crossing. The Gross River Crossing is a two-lane crossing. The corridor that was proposed by the state government was a six-lane motorway. It's quite a different proposal. Should we not be 
So, so the, the question relates to the the value of the uh, the gross river crossing. Uh, should it be should the the funds from the gross river crossing be transferred to North Richmond? and that would provide a better outcome. Yeah. So, the, the North Richmond Bridge is uh, a bridge that goes under in about one in 10 years, one in five, one in 10 years, that's the sort of the flood event. The, the Yarramundi crossing is one in five, one in two, I'll, I'll get one right. <laughs> And the, the currently proposed Gross River crossing, the bridge is up uh, much higher than 1 in 10, 1 in 20. But it comes down onto Springwood Road, and where it lands on Springwood Road is about 1 in 10. So the problem is where it connects with Springwood Road. And if you make some changes, you can actually achieve a one in one hundred crossing. Sure. Now, the cost the cost of that bridge, the Gross River Bridge, is uh, around about thirty million. Round about the cost of building, and, and so that's that's one little piece of the puzzle. Council has for a long, long time been pushing for a third crossing of the Hawkesbury River what we call a high level crossing above the 1 in 100 year mark. So that you've got all condition crossings, doesn't matter what happens, you know, generally if it's a 1 in 100 year flood, you've, you've got access across the flood plain, it facilitates movements across the river in times of flood, it also facilitates evacuations and things like that. So there's a lot of sense to the council arguing for that third crossing above the 1 100 year mark. The, the cost of building a 1 100 year crossing, so the, the Windsor Bridge crossing is probably around about the new bridge, right, that's being built, is somewhere between 1 in 5 and 1 in 10. So it's, it's, it's not... No. And... And it, so it's it's not the third it's not that extra crossing it's not above the one in one hundred year flood level and the cost of that bridge is about a hundred million dollars or something like that so the cost of building a bridge above the one in one hundred year at Richmond North Richmond it's going to be way more than a hundred million and the Gross River Bridge is thirty million so. That, that's why I think the... the, the I, I question that uh, because, okay, yes, that bridge might cost that. It's probably a little bit short, but not a lot, really. Uh, to, to do what it's going to do. There's a lot of earthquakes to get up to the height where it needs to be to do what it's saying. Uh, and particularly work with spring and rain. And also connection to it. If you can do a bridge, well, I, a bridge for it. So in, in the North Richmond case, you're really more looking at the cost of the road and some road work. So the, the cost, the, 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 we've got a budget of $30 million for the Gross River Crossing. So we're working to that budget. We're, we're not adding to that budget, okay? So that's, that's the budget. Now, no, no, the, the total cost is $30 million. Okay, that's the finished project. So we've got $30 million that we're going to get that high level crossing above the 1 in 100 across the Springwood Road. That's what we're working on. The, the other thing though is, if we don't take that money from the developer for that bridge, the VPA that was executed some years ago gives the majority of that money to RMS 
and RMS have said they won't spend it in this area. They've got higher priorities to spend it on. So this is our chance to do something. And as I said, that crossing <laughs> at Richmond, above the 1 in 100, it basically goes from Richmond across the floodplain to North Richmond. It's, it's not dissimilar to the causeway from McGrath's Hill to Richmond. It's, it's that sort of structure. So it's way above 30 million. It's way above 100 million. It's a really big project. So it's not something that I think we can pursue and just put the 30 million from the Gross River Crossing. That won't deliver the outcome. I hope that helps in some way. Yes. Um, residents of Gross Wallop and Yarramundi have been through this Nibula Bridge many times before over the years. And our concern was, the bridge looks great. So one of the bridges developers will build, but it comes out onto country roads that can't cope with traffic. Now, on some of the plans that we saw last time with, that the council and the developers came to, Gross Wall Road wasn't even on the map. So it showed that traffic would come all the way from Wilpern and through Currajong and around those windy bends, go straight along Gross Bale Road, turn down Gross River Road and go that way. No chance in hell will they do that. They'll come along Gross Wall Road where that school cannot cope with two cars mm -hmm. passing at the mm -hmm. same time. So who's going to maintain those roads and make those roads safe enough for all that traffic that goes bypasses through all those little rat runs, goes into Penrith, or goes back out to the mountains, who's going to maintain those roads? And that's, that's why we said that we would be having a meeting in the near future, and we'll start that dialogue. We've been through all of that. We went through that years ago. Well, now that's 30 million, that's not a bridge or a to maintain everything. So it's, it's the connection from Springwood Road up to Red Bank. That's the, that's the 30 million price tag. Now, that's what they've got approval for. They, they can go and do that now. The, the issue, though, is if, if, we, if they don't get the necessary approvals, the majority of those funds will go into the state government and they will, in all likelihood, spend them in other areas. So we've got to come back and revisit this and do it properly. I, I hear your point that some roads weren't referenced on plans. We've got to make sure that all those roads are referenced on plans and we've got to make sure that we've got a plan that has the whole picture. And that's what we'll try and start when we come back and start that consultation. But we tried to discuss that last time and when we spoke to the people who were obviously developing the bridge, said go to council. But the, the maps were all wrong. So this, this time, It'll be council, RMS, and the developer together. And community? Uh, that, that we would be meeting with the community. Okay. That, that's, you know, so it won't be a case of a meeting where you'll meet with um, RMS and they'll say, oh, you've got to speak to the council about that. That's or awesome. you, you meet with the developer and they say, you'll have to speak to the council yeah. about that. We'll all be here together and we'll be all answering the questions. And it'll, it'll, it'll be a meeting that will start a process. It won't be a meeting where we'll be expecting a big tick on the night. At this point, though, does, is the traffic expected to go through Carajong Village? So the question is, is the traffic expected to go through Carajong Village? <laughs> So there's, there's no connection through the new subdivision. That, 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 wasn't, that wasn't approved by the, the, the council when they approved the subdivision. So again, we're aware of that issue and that's something that we'll have to discuss with the community. But well, we've got to work within, we've got to work within the framework that we've got to work within. But until we get something concrete in front of people, it, it becomes quite difficult to have this conversation. I think we need to have that meeting as soon as we possibly can so that people have got something real that they can talk to and discuss.
So the, the question is about the involvement of the local member, uh, Mr Perrottet. Mr Perrottet is aware of the conversations that we're having. He's aware and encouraging RMS to participate. So we're continuing to have that discussion. So yes, I believe that's the case. He needs to be more than aware. He needs to be involved. Because yes. Yes. he's so involved in my work. And he's going on about local traffic solutions and things like that. That's what we need here. And he needs to be involved in the discussion. That's what we need to do. We actually need some investment. So again, just following up, I've been in two meetings that he's been in attendance at, so I think he's aware of the issue, definitely. I have a gentleman up the back had a question. Is it related to the bridge? No, it's related to the dam. So the, the question is, if we've spent 90 million on the spillway for Warragamba Dam, why do we now have to spend 700 million dollars? When the dam was already rejected, and all the safety things, and all the money, 500 things are already in place, why do we now have to raise the dam wall? So the, the question is, why do we have to spend 700 million dollars now on raising the dam wall when all those other previous works have been have been carried out. So there's a there's a high level document that's been prepared that uh, talks about floodplain management in the Hawkesbury Valley. And part of that involves the, the next phase of that involves the detailed investigation of raising the dam wall. What council resolved is to wait and see that report before they make a decision. No, one, no one's seen the detailed report, so it's very difficult to talk about the pros and cons of raising or not raising the dam at whatever cost until we've got all that detailed information. So, well, look, I, I, I can, I'll answer it another way. Hawkesbury Council has nothing to do with projects involving raising the dam wall. If, if you want a more detailed answer, you, you really do need to speak to the state government agencies. I can only tell you what I've told you because that's all I know. Sorry, you No, no, no. Uh, could the Mayor ask the Premier to come to a community meeting sometime between now and the next election where we can address the questions to her as our local member doesn't seem to want to turn up? So the Mayor's in attendance tonight. I'm sure she's heard that comment. So, well, any time, any time, I'm sure we can fit in a, a meeting down at. Um... So the, the comment relates to inviting the premier to attend a community meeting. As I said, the mayor's in attendance. She's heard that comment. I'm sure she'll take whatever action she deems appropriate. Oh, there's a lady over there. Thank you. I'm a Grace Walsh uh, resident, and I feel that we're being hit double. Uh, we're not only um, just getting, we're having our properties acquisition and also we've got two bridge things coming through us. Uh, we just wanted to know why, you know, why are we copying the lot? Carajons as well, they're copying it as well. So the whole area is being affected when we've got a lot of land around the area that belongs to the National Park. Mm -hmm. So why, why are they coming straight through the middle of us instead of going... So that, 
the, the, the statement is why to uh, why why are the corridors going through uh, Breswold and Currajong? I, 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 I don't think I don't think you just make a decision to put a road in a national park or an agricultural area or residential or anything without doing the appropriate studies. We don't have the appropriate studies. So it's impossible for us to understand why this needs to happen. That's why council have resolved the way they have. They're saying, stop, don't do this, go back, give us all the information, consult with the community and develop a response from the ground up. So that's what the council have resolved to do and that's the council submission. And look, reading between the lines, you would, you would have to think that someone in the government is listening because there, there certainly seems to be a change of feeling on the corridors. So I think let's watch this space. We'll certainly be advocating the, the points in our submission uh, whenever and wherever we can. And we're acutely aware of the, the sentiment. Uh, I was at a, 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 I've been at a number of the corridor meetings. I was at one at the showgrounds that was a massive crowd. Now, that a crowd like that doesn't go unnoticed. So I, I think we just got to let it now take its its course. And with the other crossing, the Gross River, as I said, we're looking to have a meeting in the near future as soon as we've got something concrete. And it will be again the start of a consultation process with the community. So we we'll want to put some facts in front of the community on that as well. It's a beautiful area. Yes, it is. Well, I don't, I don't think the, the comment was about putting it through the National Park. I don't think anyone's advocating putting a, a, a corridor here tonight through the National Park. So, and Okay, yes. So the question is, is the council aware of any future Red Bank style developments on the western side of the river? This, this question came up at the uh, forum at the showgrounds on the corridors and it's also mentioned in the council's submission. Corridors like the Bells Line of Road are corridors that can be developed in a very open and consultative way because they're purely a transport connection. They only become sensitive when uh, land rezoning hangs off it. Now, the council is not supporting any further land rezonings uh, of a Red Bank style on the western side of the river. <coughs> so they are, they are of the view that a corridor can be developed in a consultative way if there's a need for a corridor, but they've got to demonstrate the need for the corridor as well. So there's nothing on the agenda at the moment for a Red Bank style development west of the, the river, beyond Red Bank and beyond uh, Jacaranda uh, Ponds. They, they were approved some years ago, both of those, but there's no further uh, uh, proposals. Uh, there's the Kermond Courageong investigation area and there'll be a report, as Andrew said earlier, there'll be a report coming up to Council in July on that. But again, what's being considered there is not of a Red Bank style. What's the Jacaranda Ponds? That's over near Glossop. The, the question is what's Jacaranda Ponds? That's a subdivision over near Glossop. Okay. So the question is about the medium density state environmental planning policy. So council considered a, a resolution uh, a couple of weeks ago where it resolved to request uh, a deferral of the implementation of that medium density uh, proposal for 12 months. Uh, we haven't had a response as yet. 
uh, a number of councils have requested a deferral. Some have already received an answer. We haven't received an answer as yet. Uh, so, uh, Ride was uh, it was approved. Uh, Bankstown, Canterbury Bankstown was approved. Uh, they're the two that come to mind. Uh, but a number of councils have requested, as have we. Yes. So look, I've, I've only been here for 12 months, but I can tell you that in the time that I've been here, the current council is of a view that they want to do more of this type of activity. They want to be out and with the community, consulting the community, uh, listening to the community. So we recently had a consultation at Peel Park. We were going to have a follow-up consultation on that. Uh, this is Peel Park in North Richmond. We're going to have a follow-up consultation on that in a couple of weeks. Now, we'll go back to that consultation and we'll have answers to every question that was raised. And we said at the outset, we, we may not be able to agree to everything that's asked for, but we will be able to explain why we're thinking the way we, we do. And consultation is about that. It's about giving you an opportunity to... Uh, hear what's under consideration, give you a whole lot of information about that, <coughs> give you time to then respond. We go away and think about that, investigate, then we come back and report it back, line by line, this is what you said, this is what we've uh, assessed to be the situation. So it's, it, consultation is not necessarily about just agreeing, because there are diverse views in the community, and you can't have a solution that everyone can agree on necessarily. But you, you, there is an obligation to explain and that's what we want to do. So tonight, uh, uh, as was outlined at the very beginning, we gave a commitment this time last year that we would come back and report. And our intention is to do this report back every year. So that, you know, we'll talk at this time next year, we'll be talking about what we've done over the next 12 months. So this is that sort of forum and feedback opportunity. But we have things like the Peel Park consultation, the, the meeting that we flagged we're going to have for the Gross River Crossing Red Bank proposal. There will be a consultation on that and there will be consultation on Kermont Courageon when Council considers that report. So that people that have got an interest in that particular issue can come and participate in that. The, the really important message to take away from tonight is give us your email address if you've got one or your contact details make sure it's legible um, there's nothing worse than us the next morning trying to understand writing and, and hope we've understood the email address so if you've got some contact details by all means leave them with us tonight so that we can let you know about those further meetings and you've got the option of attending or not attending but there's going to be more of this happening because that's what this current council is about.
So one of the other things that Andrew is working on is our rural and urban strategy. And that's a much broader piece of work that covers the whole local government area and looks at you know, transport, agriculture, uh, environmental considerations, residential considerations, employment. That's, that's a much bigger and more complex piece of work. But again, the consultation on that is, is really difficult because we can just you know, dump all that information in front of a community and say, there you are, you've got it all. But that's, to digest all of that and understand all the linkages can be very difficult. So we've got to think about how we're going to consult on some of those really big, broad, complex issues. But again, we would welcome that feedback as we work our way through that process. Our, our objective is to involve you and engage you on the way through. It's not to involve you and turn you off. And we've got to think really hard about how we do that. And we're going to get it wrong on occasions, we know that. But we're going to be having a go and we'll continue to have a go.